Hey, Garrett Brill down here in Texas. So recently I seen that uh, Multicopter Warehouse had been uh, showing and discussing and advertising that they are going to make available a uh, high quality payload delivery system for the Phantom 4 series, for the Phantom series. And uh, you know, I'd seen quite a few in the past and they, they were okay, but this one, this one really kind of had me interested and um, and I wanted to try it out, and and so I am, and and here we here we are with it. So, I want to say uh, so far my impressions are are it is really nice. I kind of want to walk you through what I know now, um, and I'll kind of show you what we have, and then uh, in here in just a little while we'll take it outside and put it to the test and see how it performs. So first of all, it kind of comes in this this nice case. Um, I have it out of the case right now, obviously, but it is a nice padded case, so the delivery is nice, and it comes with. Um, some extra equipment, it comes with extra line. This is kind of a very solid line. Um, these are little bands to wrap things up. This is your charging. This thing does have its own independent battery. It does not run off the battery. Even comes with a little tiny tool to swap out the light. And of course, this is where the main unit goes. So nice packaging, nice delivery. It does come with um, instructions. Uh, the instructions are, I, I'd call them good. They're not great. Uh, they're They're better than most instructions that come with a lot of this uh, drone equipment these days uh, as most of you know the instruction books are, are pretty lacking but uh, this one has pretty decent mounting instructions on it and, and it also tells you your setup shows you the screens and everything else so um, I had no problem with it at all and I don't think anybody really would uh, could it be better sure but but uh, it's definitely adequate in my opinion then the unit itself the unit itself is has a very nice finish to it. It looks factory. It it uh, fits right on there. It um, uh, there is no no strange uh, contraptions or duct tape and baling wire like like uh, I like to say. Uh, everything on there looks solid and, and like I said, it really does look like a a factory unit. Uh, the installation is so easy that it just pops right on there. Um, the most difficult part, and, and I'm not just saying this, there's no exaggeration, the most difficult part is, is these two little bands right here. Now it's not that those are difficult, it's just that this thing is so easy to connect, ridiculously easy to connect, that, that, um, that that's all there was to it, and that's really the hardest part. Uh, the replacement unit, you pop out your lens, they give you the tool for that, you pop out the factory DJI lens, here's the factory DJI one, and then here is the, the new one comes from uh, PGY Tech. Uh, you can see you don't lose the functionality of your LED light there. Um, it, it remains. Uh, it's just got a sensor inside of there that, that runs down. The other nice thing that I like about it is they added this quick disconnect right here. So if you, you don't have to pop that in and out. Uh, if you want to remove this unit, this, this unit down here, you can just disconnect this quick disconnect here. It just plugs in like a stereo jack. Uh, and then remove this unit and then leave this with your with your band on there leave this on there and then it's uh, it takes maybe five seconds to put this on there and take it off in that case so uh, very nice for the the quick deployment as well so in the instructions it'll tell you that the, the one thing you'll want um, to do for easy use of this is you'll want to set up your C1 and C2 buttons um, particularly to turn the lights on and off because the way this is mechanized is there is a, a sensor up here in this light, a light sensor, and whenever you turn off these front LEDs, it, it sends a message to this thing which triggers this release mechanism back here. So we'll definitely want to, to set that up and the way you, I already have mine set up, of course, the way you'll want to do that is right in here, See if I can get the light right. See the C1 and C2 buttons. The you see I have the C1 button to turn on and off the head LEDs. So that means that whenever I press this button right here, um, it's going to turn those on and off and actuate that release mechanism, uh, both on and off. So just so you know, if you actuate it on, it'll release. If you actuate it off, it'll release. So <clears throat> that works out really well. Um, See if I can show it to you here. So I'm gonna close that. See if I can if I can get in here close enough for it. All right. Let me move this to the side. Maybe. Okay. I think you can I think you can kind of see it there. Okay. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the, uh, the C1 button and then you'll see this release mechanism drop. Oh. Have to power it on first. There we go. Forgot about that part. So there you saw it release. All right. Now, that's another nice feature. You can power that on and off to where you can have it. What I found, the instructions will tell you just to take this part right here and force it up over this. It's got a little tapered edge. I personally didn't really like putting putting that force on there. I just I just really wasn't comfortable with it. So my personal way that I do this now is I just kind of hold this up here. I also have big fingers and I just actuate it and then let, let it come and grab it. So that's how I do it now. I just, I wasn't really comfortable applying that much force to it. it it'll do it, but I just really didn't like it. So uh, to each your own. Anyway, all right. Well, uh, and that's really it. It's, it's that simple. Oh, one other thing I really do like about this is they designed these. See, these are the, the clips to mount this on here. Now, some of the mount systems that I've seen in the past was really kind of wonky. You had to really fumble with it to get it. This one, you can do it completely blind. Um, all you have to do is go up here and clip it on and it really is that easy, all right? Um, one of the things that I'll differ from in the instruction manual is they'll tell you that they want this cord to be very, very short. Um, for me, depending on what you're gonna carry, that can actually be more of a detriment. Um, I found that having a little bit longer cord was beneficial to me, uh, but again, that's, that's just my personal finding. So anyway, let's take this thing out there and uh, we'll see what it can do. All right, so we made it outside. Um, I know there's gonna be a few people that ask some questions like, you know, what were the conditions and everything? And I'm gonna try to answer as many of those commonly asked questions as we can. So uh, today, it's uh, right now anyway, it's uh, 96 degrees out with an eight mile an hour wind, breeze, whatever you wanna call it. Nine, uh, it's got 35% humidity. And our density altitude is 3,335 feet. So that kind of gives you an idea of the conditions. Now, um, on the flight, one of the things that the instructions will tell you is don't fly it in sport mode. And the reason that they tell you, the reason that they tell you don't fly it in sport mode is because you can see right there, it can lean over pretty far but I mean, it can, it would have to lean way, way, way over, but it could, the gimbal could touch that. It doesn't mean it's gonna break the gimbal or anything like that, but it could actually touch that. Uh, now you can move that back a little bit and get it out of the way uh, on this platform here. Uh, but as it is, if you, if you center it up the best possible, um, it could hit it. So if you leave it in regular mode, um, I tried this out earlier and it will not touch that even with the most aggressive movements that you can put into it. So. If you read that instructions and you're wondering why, that's why. So, let's put this back down here. And what I want to try to do is, for me, again, I'm, I'm the public safety guy. You know, I mean, this thing could be used for all kinds of fun and everything, of course. Uh, but to me, uh, it's really not worth its salt for my use anyway. Uh, if it can't carry a basic first aid kit, right? And I know this may sound extreme, but if it can't carry a full size PFD or life preserver, now this is a class three PFD full size life, pres life preserver. Um, a lot of people, well, why don't you carry an inflatable? Well, there's a lot of arguments for and against. We're not going to get into that here. Uh, I prefer a something that doesn't have air in it and can handle sticks and branches and um, barbed wire or whatever it happens to rub up against so this is texas after all all right so the first one that we'll do is the first aid kit um, i'm just going to go and fly it out over the yard um, i'm kind of doing this on my own so i'll have to move and track but i'm just going to fly it out maybe go fly it over the just to the edge of my property, fly it back, and then just drop it. And I just wanna see the performance of the aircraft with this mechanism, and also the ability to release. All right, so here we go. Okay. 
All right, so everything checks good. Let's see what she does. Take off. Uh, one of the things that you will want to do for sure on this is you will always want to make sure that you uh, disable your downward vision position. That will probably be a question someone would have. Uh, it's in the instructions clearly. You do not want to fly with your vision positioning sensor on. Um, it will give you some strange results. And yes, I've tried. So you can see it holding strong. I'm going to go out here. I'm going to kind of give it some a little bit of a a little bit of maneuvering. That's one of the things, you know, you hear a lot of bit from the old RC guys. They'll tell you about the old pendulum effect. In fact, let me see if I can't zoom in here a little bit to show you. The pendulum effect, the, those guys, um, they're, they're familiar with it from the old helicopters where the there is no moment arms from the rotor to it. It's just all in line. A multi-copter doesn't have the same thing. You can see how quickly that compensates for it and that you won't get the same pendulum effect as what you would get with a helicopter. Um, Go, go read about a moment arm or moments of inertia on the internet physics. Um, they have the ability, the leverage to be able to correct for something that's in CG. So you can see I'm doing some maneuvers. I'm going to kind of go forward here. Maneuver it back towards us. Bring it back over, over center here. And now I'm going to release it. And there we go. So I would call that a definite success for the first aid kit. Alright, one of the things that I'm going to check is I'm gonna check, I know a lot of people get concerned about, about the motors being warmed on something like this. Again, it is 96 degrees and sunny out, let me see. So those motors feel 100 degrees tops. I mean, they are not hot at all. They feel about the same temperature uh, as if I'm just out flying. I, I see no uh, large amounts of overheating. So next thing that we're gonna do is the good old full-size life preserver. This thing's significantly bigger uh, than the aircraft, but uh, I think it'll do it. So I think you can probably see there why if I had a real short cord, uh, as I mentioned earlier today, if I had a real short cord, it didn't really work out for me too well. I think you can see now why I prefer a little bit of a longer cable to it. So let's see what the old Phantom 4 Pro version 2 has behind it. Let's see if we can pick up this full-size PFD and, and deliver it. You can see it leaning into the wind a little bit. Let's, uh, let's do a little maneuvering back and forth here. Back this way. And we got that. Kind of take it. Up and over here, get it up in the wind a little bit more. We're looking for performance here, see how this thing can do. All right, so let's let's uh, let's have a little bit of fun with this. Let's take this over here, and we're gonna we're gonna kind of 
Let me move this thing down so you can see what I'm doing here. So we're gonna kind of do this real time. We're gonna pretend that the my fire extinguisher might be a, a, a victim somewhere. So I'm gonna hit this button. Now I'm looking down, you can see my crosshairs there. There's our victim, right? And so now I'm just gonna hit this other button and release it and let's see how good we do. Ready? Look at there. Look at there. I'll take it both a cookie and a trophy. So all right, let's move this move this thing out. There's the aircraft still hovering stable. I'll bring it back. So we flew that for for a little while. Let it let it sit on there for a little while with this Phantom 4 carry it around. Alright, I brought it back and landed it. Again, sorry, I'm kind of doing this solo here. Again, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna check the check the motors between those two, both of those deliveries. Um, we used about 30% of the battery. So Let's, uh, let me go check these motors real quick. They're a little bit warmer. Uh, again, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not putting a thermometer on them. I'd say maybe maybe around 105 degrees tops. Uh, they're still not hot or anything that I would worry about at all. Okay. Uh, the last thing that I'm going to do here in just a minute is I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to uh, check for the fit inside the case because I know everybody's going to want to know about that. All right, so I know uh, one of the common questions anytime they get something, does it fit in the case? Can they get this and put it in the factory case for those that don't want to buy uh, any kind of aftermarket case? So here we go. Obviously, to put our uh, gimbal clamp on, um, that's not going to fit on there at the same time because they kind of occupy the same space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, disconnect it right here. I talked about the quick disconnect. And I'm going to un I'm going to remove it. So now it's off. And this should fit right down in the case, right by where I put the propellers. Now I can take and put my gimbal lock on. All right, so my gimbal lock is on, and in the case, of course, the controller would go in there and close. So yes, it does fit perfectly fine in the case, um, everything. So overall, uh, I think it's an outstanding unit. Um, everything about it is nice. Again, the probably the biggest downfall of it is um, the really the lack of <laughs> the lack of detailed instructions for those that really need them to mount something like this. Um, other than that, I think it's a really great unit. Um, I had, I've had no failures. Um, I've actually probably dropped, I don't know, 15 or 20 items with this thing by now. Uh, I tried it in uh, up to probably about 10 mile an hour winds. I really wouldn't carry anything over about 10 mile an hour winds at all um, because this is a smaller platform, but as you saw, it did do okay with a full-size life preserver in eight mile an hour winds. You saw it leaning over a little bit. Did just fine. So yeah. anyway, overall, I think it's a great, uh, great product. Uh, finally, a, a good high quality drop system for the Phantom series. Um, and again, I got this at, uh, got this from Multicopter Warehouse. So anyway, talk to y'all later. Bye.